Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, uh, longtime viewers of the Dungeon Dive will know that I'm a pretty huge fan of an author called Manly Wade Wellman. I've talked about him quite a bit and even uh, featured some of his books in some of my videos. And of course, his most famous character is probably a guy named Silver John. Now, Silver John is kind of like an American bard, and it mixes in um, American folklore and regional lore, regional horror, with some kind of uh, probably like Cthulhu or cosmic mythos kind of stuff. And Silver John is a bard who travels around the Appalachian Mountains fighting creatures, helping the people of the Appalachian region with the use of his silver strung um, acoustic guitar, which provides him with some mystical powers. And so uh, some of his novels are The Hanging Stones, uh, The Voice in the Mountain, After Dark, the Lost and the Lurking, which this is probably one of my favorite covers of all time. It's just, it's, re it's really classy looking. I love this cover. It's just, oh man, it's so nice. So well designed. Uh, the Old Gods Waken, which this was the first of the uh, Silver John uh, things that I ever read. And then this fantastic collection called Who Fears the Devil. Uh, so this is a collection of all the short stories. It doesn't contain any of the novels. And unfortunately, uh, Manly Wade Wellman's fiction seems to come in and out of print quite quickly, and it stays out of print for a long time, comes into print, and then quickly goes out of print. And so even this most recent collection, which was like the late 2010s, I believe, even this already is out of print and quite expensive. Uh, when was this? Copyrighted. Um, yeah, 2010. So even this collection here is really expensive already. And a lot of his stuff is just really hard to find, which is a real shame. But I did want to read a quick little story from this selection here, this collection. So this collection contains all of the short stories and then some, some connecting little pieces of like flash fiction. And I wanted to read one called The Stars Down There, which I think is really one of the most, uh, it's kind of like, pretty things I've ever read. It's really cool. So this says, the stars down there. I mean it, she said again. You can't go any farther because here's where the world comes to its end. She might could have been a few years older than I was or a few years younger. She was thin, pretty, with all that dark hair and those wide stretched eyes. The evening was cool around us and the sun's last edge faded back on the way I'd come. The world's around as a ball. I kicked a rock off the cliff. It goes on forever. And I heart for the rock to hit bottom, but it didn't. I'm not trying to fool you, she said. Here's the ending place of the world. Don't step any closer. Just making to look down into the valley, I told her. I see mist down there. It isn't mist, and it wasn't. For down there popped out stars in all their faithful beauty the same way they were popping out over our heads. The sky full of stars. No man could say how far down they were. I ask your pardon for doubting you, I said. It's sure enough the ending place of the world. If you jumped off here, you'd fall forever and ever. Forever and ever, she repeated me. That's what I think. That's what I hope. And that's why I came here this evening. Before I could catch hold of her, she jumped. Stooping, I saw her falling. Littler and littler against the stars down there, till at last I could see her no more. Just a great, great little piece of fiction there. So uh, thematic and uh, just such a great, great atmosphere. And this collection here also contains some uh, some pretty good art. I wonder if it lists the, uh, the artists here who the uh, interior illustrations were done by. Uh, cover illustration by Kiernan Yanner and interior illustrations by Sarah Oderstrater. So yeah, um, just really good fiction. If you like that kind of regional horror, regional mythology, folklore, 
highly recommend the Silver John novels. And the reason that I'm bringing Silver John up and Manly Wade Wellman up is today we're going to talk a little bit about this game here called Fearsome Wilderness, which in some ways is an exact kind of board game I think that Manly Wade Wellman might have made. So let's see what this says here. Uh, fend off the unnatural fearsome critters of folklore. Endure grueling days and tormented nights in the forest. Time is short. Can you survive with only 12 weeks to winter? Uh, it goes on to say, In Fearsome Wilderness, one to four players work together, rolling dice and drawing cards to ensure their folk heroes survive the horrors of the wilderness. So Fearsome Wilderness is kind of a tower defense game meets a Yahtzee game with a tiny little bit of maybe some resource management and um, some survival elements. And right off the bat, you will notice that the rule book is very nicely made. It is quite reminiscent of Kingdom Death Monster in its presentation and shape. It's hardback, long rectangle shape with a cloth both bookmark. The graphic design is not up to uh, the KDM Poots standard, that is for sure. But it is a nice production, and it does introduce the game well with some uh, quite evocative photography and art. The game itself is rather simple. We'll return back to the uh, rule book in a minute because I think the rule book contains what is probably the most interesting element of the of the game. But in this game, you are going to be playing as four American folklore heroes. And those heroes are Paul Bunyan, Johnny Appleseed, Babe the Blue Ox, and Calamity Jane. And in the game, you are going to be playing through uh, about a week's worth of turns. And each scenario is a week long. And each day is separated into day and night. And you will be trying to collect food and water. You will be trying to plant trees to chop down those trees to collect logs to build certain things in the game all while you are kind of defending your territory on this single large map with six different regions and at the end of one region you have like a, the the shores of a lake and at the far end of the re of the other at the other region you have this blackness this darkness and this kind of reminds me of that stars down there stories like it's kind of like the end of the world because the darkness is where a lot of the critters are going to be coming from now we, uh, as you play each scenario of which there are 12 your characters will be afflicted with these uh disabilities these um ailments things such as anguished or um, aching, perhaps bleeding ears. They could become blinded or broken. Uh, they could become desperate and distressed, distraught. You can become mutated. So there's all kinds of uh, bad things that can happen to your characters. And then there are also quite a few good things, a handful of good things that as you progress through the scenarios, every once in a while at the beginning of certain scenarios, you will be able to uh, pick one of these courageous, determined, mighty, lucky, tireless, fearless to uh, start a scenario with. And as you're playing through the scenarios, you will be taking your four miniatures for Calamity Jane, their um, Johnny Appleseed, Babe the Blue Ox, and Paul Bunyan. You also have this well, which is a place where you can gather water from. And as you're moving around this board, this track, you will be taking turns uh, planting trees. And the trees have a look special abilities. Some cause nightmares. We'll go over nightmares in a minute. It tells you a little bit about if it's softwood or hardwood, what the R value is for its insulation value, and then how many axes you need to chop down the trees and how much how many logs they provide. And there are a handful of different trees, such as white pine, black spruce, western hemlock. 
uh, western red cedar, Douglas fir, black walnut. So all kinds of different trees you will be planting. And this is kind of a mystical, magical forest that you are in. And when you plant a tree on one turn, the next day, the trees uh, grow to their full height. So it's kind of a, it, it's a weird forest. And then also you're going to be having to deal with a whole deck of different critters. And all of these critters are based on free public domain works of American folklore. So you have things like the splinter cat, the joint snake, the silver cat, the side hill cougar, the wampus cat, the aggro pelter, the snipe, the Jersey devil. I'm sure most of you have heard of a Jersey devil, the axe handle hound, the gumbaroo, the glaw walkus, the hodag. I love the hodag. Really cool. The ball tailed cat, the tea kettle or so as you can see, just all kinds of cool little weird creatures. And those creatures are most mostly going to spawn from the uh, darkness here. And they are going to march down towards your heroes. And you are going to have to defend against them while you are cutting down trees, while you are collecting your resources and trying to survive. And the way you do that mostly is through a kind of a game of Yahtzee. So the heroes, each hero is going to have six dice. And when is that hero's turn, they are going to roll the dice. You can roll up to three times. You can keep whatever you want to roll, Yahtzee rules. And then these will do certain things. So this symbol here will allow you to uh, gain some foods because you have to feed yourself and you have to drink water every turn. This symbol here will give you some water. Uh, this symbol here is used to fight against critters. This symbol here allows you to uh, dispel, to get rid of some of your ailments. And then this is the axe that you need in order to chop down trees. And then this skull, if you end your three rolls with any skulls out, then you will take a certain amount of damage. And so most of the action in the game is going to be rolling, keeping the things you want, keeping the things you're trying to work for, and then continuing to roll and playing Yahtzee, gathering resources like that. And then you are going to be uh, doing that, taking your actions, fighting monsters, chopping down trees, hoping to get the resources you need for that week. And there are 12 different scenarios. And the scenarios... Uh, they progress. Each one will kind of add some new rules as you are going. And uh, you'll be, we're just working through the 12 scenarios, trying to collect everything you need before winter. One of the most interesting elements in the game is during the night phase, each of the, some of the creatures will have an overnight effect, which you will have to deal with. And some of the creatures cards will say gives a nightmare. And when a, you are on a space with a creature that gives nightmares, you draw a random creature from the critter deck. And every one of those critters is associated with a little nightmare story. And if you are on the same space as a creature who gives a nightmare, you draw a card and then you turn to its page and you read the little nightmare scenario. And you kind of have a, like a little story slash choose your own adventure. So if you drew the Hugag uh, and you had this nightmare, it would say the enormous critter's jointless legs require it to sleep standing up and it can never sit down. It does not tire of standing, though, and has contempt for those lounging around. Savvy wilderness folk have come up with a clever way to hunt this beast. They would partially cut trees and when a Hugag would try to lean against the tree to, uh, to rest, it would fall over and become much less dangerous. So uh, the nightmare. When you find yourself wait, uh, you, you find yourself waking alone in the woods toward a large hill. As you approach, you notice the hill has a very strange shape. Upon investigating, you realize it's an enormous neck and chin. You decide to climb atop but struggle to find footing in the soft, flexible neck skin. You eventually make it to the top and look out across the forest. You can see for miles this high up. Roll to wake up. So in that uh, instance, you would roll your, your character die. And if you, if you rolled a leaf, you would wake up. If you roll a skull, you would wake up and take damage. So if you wake up, then you would read the wake up portion. Um, so if you wake up on that first roll, if you do, you are now awake. 
At least it seems like that. You are pretty sure you are awake. You may end this nightmare if you choose. Otherwise, okay, you can read on. Uh, you see a large creature in the distance. It's as tall as most trees and slowly walking through them towards you. It bumps into trees, knocking over any in its path. You look down at the face you are standing on. It's yours. Roll to wake up. So let's say we don't wake up. Standing on your own face terrifies you. A hugag has made it through the trees to the face hill you are on and is tall enough to sink its teeth into. Do you A, climb the hill, climb the face hills and nostrils, B, climb inside the face hills mouth, or C, climb down the side and hide inside the face hills ear? So then you would make a choice, you would turn the page and you could do whatever it says to continue that nightmare until you wake up, take damage, or something else happens to you. And this is probably the most interesting part of the game. Um, unfortunately, the game as a whole, in my opinion, feels it, it, it feels like you are given about half a game in a box. It has a very interesting premise, some great lore, some okay writing. The writing's a little rough, as you could tell when I was reading that, probably. It's, it's not quite up to par what I would call like great writing, but it's okay. But the, the, the way this game is a huge disappointment, really, is that there, there really isn't any progression. That's what I'm trying to say. I had a hard time saying that. <laughs> there really isn't any uh, progression in the game beyond what's written on the page. And what I mean by that is there isn't a settlement phase. There isn't a log cabin phase. There isn't anything that happens in between the scenarios. If you take a uh, look at a game like Kingdom Death Monster, um, imagine Kingdom Death Monster with only the showdown phase with everything else kind of stripped away. And my favorite part of Kingdom Death Monster is the stuff that happens outside of the showdown, outside of the action on the board. I like the hunt phase and I like the settlement phase. And I was really, I really thought that this game would have some kind of settlement phase because the whole point of this, uh, of this campaign is to build your cabin, to build a canoe, to build the tools and the things that your characters will need to survive. But none of those things are represented in cards. Uh, None of those things ever allow your characters to get better. You will never have, uh, you will never upgrade your characters, uh, their, their, their clothing or their, um, their tools, their weapons. There is no sense of progression in the game except for what you read. So for instance, in this first scenario, your goal is to build, build an outhouse, tools, kitchenware, a campfire tripod, a chicken coop, troughs and a fence for the livestock and to do that you have to gather five log tokens once you cut down some trees and bring them back to the lake but once you do that you just go on to the second scenario and i guess you just kind of assume that your characters have all that stuff but all of that stuff doesn't add really anything to the game at all and without that sense of progression without that sense of my characters uh, surviving and getting stronger Without that sense of my homestead getting stronger and more capable of providing the things that I need, that my characters need to survive, I feel absolutely no attachment to any of the action that's going on on the board. When I'm just playing through the game, it just kind of feels like I'm playing through a game of somewhat fancy Yahtzee with some cool cards. So I really wish there was this whole other half of the game that just gave me this sense of, of, of belonging, this sense of connection to my heroes, to the world, to their uh, struggle to survive. And I think that would make for a much more interesting game. Now that could easily be provided in a very small expansion that would just be a deck of like 60 cards or something. I mean, you could easily make that as an expansion to this game, but kind of like half of that whole game, in my opinion, it is missing and it, the game suffers for it. So ultimately, I was pretty disappointed with this as a game, as a package, as a thing, as a book and art and cards 
and as a thing presenting lore and interesting tidbits. I think it's pretty interesting and there's really nothing else like it. I only wish that I liked the actual game experience a lot more than I do. I made it to the third mission and by the third mission, I was already just kind of bored. Now, as you're progress progressing through the year, through the campaign, at certain um, scenarios, you will have new rules. So some of the rules do evolve and the game gets a little more complex, but it still doesn't add that tangible sense of progression that I like in these kinds of games. So while I can't, I was really hoping that this was some kind of like really under the radar hidden gem that I could wholeheartedly recommend to viewers of the Dungeon Dive. But unfortunately, I cannot. I am, however, looking forward to this company is making a, a, an RPG, a tabletop R RPG based in this world. And I'm hoping that maybe that adds some of those elements to maybe you could combine the RPG with this book. Or if the RPG lends itself to solo play, then that could be a very interesting game to keep an eye on. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking this uh, brief look at F Fearsome Wilderness along with the Silver John stories written by Manly Wade Wellman. And I hope you enjoyed this video and we will talk to you later. Bye bye.